deep is he? The plowing plonker. Break me pearlies on this blasted pit ridden tract. <laughs> His beard on the high road. Fight! The devil's on the road! This rotten drop! Had me fooled, Fruin. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And welcome to the State of Unreal at Unreal Fest Orlando. We're here to show you what's next with Unreal Engine and so much more. We are thrilled that you're able to join us. Thank you. But first things first, I'm here with Sebastian and Kaitek from CD Projekt Red. We have a lot to talk about. Hey, guys. Hey. Thank you, Wyatt. Thank you, Wyatt, and hello, everyone. With The Witcher 4, we are stepping things up. And to do that, we needed the right partner, one that truly understands that great open world games are all about art and technology coming together. Yeah, and look, our goals are completely aligned here. And around the launch of UE5, your awesome team at CD Projekt Red announced a collaboration to make open world development in Unreal even better. Uh, and it's an opportunity. We, we just couldn't pass it up. So we've been working on a technical demo together to achieve just that. I think we should take a look at it. You guys ready? Born ready. Kaitek is going to play the build for us. Sure. Let's do it. This is a technological showcase set in the world of The Witcher 4. What you just saw and are going to see now is running on a standard PlayStation 5 at 60 FPS with ray tracing. So in the game, you'll be playing as Ciri, a professional monster slayer, a witcher. She explores the world and hunts down monsters for coin. The region we are in is called Kovir, and you'll get to explore it in a game. Right now, Ciri is investigating a monster, and after gathering new clues, she is heading back to a nearby village. All right, everyone, meet Kelpie. Let weeds be weeds, Kelpie. So just like Geralt at Roach, Ciri has her own loyal companion. We return to town. These two characters need to feel like one, since you're going to explore the world on horseback, riding these to feel seamless, natural, and just fun. Yeah, and to support that, we're introducing multi-character motion matching in Unreal. So Siri and Kelpie, they're perfectly synchronized when mounting from any angle and speed. 
And we also support root motion movement on Kelpie, so controlling her feels realistic and grounded. And there are also some really nice improvements to our Unreal Chaos Flesh Solver and these machine-learned deformations. So you've got realistic muscles moving and stretching under Kelpie's skin without compromising the performance there. So let's leave Siri behind for a second and talk about the world itself. So much of the Witcher world is natural, organic, especially Kovir with its dense forest and wild nature. Yeah, and wild nature is hard. And with nanite geometry, we freed artists from so many of their old constraints. But we don't want to rest until everything we do in Unreal has that same spirit of freedom. There's always more work to do. And foliage is a huge piece of that puzzle. So we are excited to introduce nanite foliage. And in order to achieve gorgeous foliage density everywhere, while still being memory efficient, fast to render, we believe that a new idea was needed. So instead of the same card approach we've been using for the past 20 years, artists should be free to take a nanite approach to foliage, modeling every single leaf and pine needle. And the old LOD tricks of the past, they needed a complete rethink. And in their place, it's a new adaptive voxel representation in nanite. It's volumetric, it's fully 3D, it is super fast to render. And these dense clusters of triangles turn into these cubes, which at a distance, they're no larger than a pixel, and they react to the changing light of our dynamic sun and our shadows, and they allow artists to render whatever amount of foliage is needed to achieve their vision without compromise. And no compromise means how ambitious we are when it comes to bringing our vision to life with incredible visuals. But more than that, together with Epic, we created faster way to load the world. We can now bring in more content more quickly for the smoothest possible experience as we fly down to catch up with Siri. Welcome to Valdrest. So Valdrest is a port town, a hub for fishing, trade and mining. It's one of those places where you can meet shady characters or overhear gossip from other lands. It's also where Tsui took on her current contract. Kaitek, let's leave Kelpi here and explore the marketplace and food. I'm so excited we can finally show you some of this stuff. Let's see what Valdrest has to offer. Guys, notice how responsive the world is. Character actions directly affect what happens around you, sometimes even setting off chain reactions. Everything is working together. Oh, look at this poor gentleman being taught how to fly by an angry innkeeper. That's what happens when you cheat at Gwen. Last of it, is it? Okay, so this is the guy who gave the three quest his own. Like you probably suspect, he has his own agenda in all of this. Off your tits again, Wilfred. Get your ass up. A typical day's toil. Who in? Ah, Witcheress. What news of my wagons? No eternity is taking that damn salt to arrive. I found them. And, well, suffice to say, they'll not reach you. As for the salt? I'm not one spec. I presume this comes as no surprise to you. Now, now. Kavir's smuggling trade is of no concern to me. Shush, shush, shush. The manticore, 
that flattened your cart and devoured your men. Quite the opposite. Mounty Corps? No, no, them winged hellspawn dwell in the arse end of Creighton, not here. While Siri decides what to do about that merchant, let's take a look at the character technology that powers this marketplace. Why don't we listen in on these fishmongers? They're selling their wares, huh? chatting up customers. Hey. Oh, and catch this is. We'll find none fresher. Rugged you ladies after one Cubs. of those. Get this clean we got it for you. You mind, dearest? Interesting, some and more. Got macro card, all Braxton's pilots. And there is tons uh, of tech to play and here. Even in a simple market stall. Metahuman tools, improved Unreal smart objects, chaos cloth, and more. Yeah, and all of this exists to make sure that the gap in quality between Siri and NPCs is as small as possible. Yeah, and closing that gap, it's not just about fidelity, right, but also authenticity. They should react to changes in the world around them. But the prisoner in Pillar isn't exciting enough for Valgrest. Let's grab everyone's attention with the circus. But the great performance deserves a huge crowd, though. <laughs> Let's crank it up. So you are seeing tons of optimizations here to many of Unreal systems, including an entirely new Unreal animation framework, allowing us to fit easily in our 60 FPS budget, not just in rendering, but also with room to spare on the game thread. Over 300 animated skeletal mesh agents all going about their business. And the whole point is to leave breathing room for developers like you to introduce the gameplay and the systems that your players expect, empowering you to make your worlds come to life without Unreal standing in your way. You are right. And that's the open world RPG that we are making. But before we wrap up, how about one final check in with Siri? We are making this game to be the most immersive and ambitious open world Witcher game ever. And we are making this a reality thanks to our work on Unreal with the team at Epic. I think what we are doing together is going to bring in a new generation of open world RPGs, and I'm so proud of what we accomplished so far. We are too. So we're almost done, but before we go, here's a small gift for all Witcher fans. A first look at Lanexa. Onward, Kelby. We've worked. Thanks, guys. It Seriously, it looks amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.